So imagine you're in a new city. Maybe you came for a convention. And you stop by a grocery store to grab some snacks for your hotel room. And as you walk into the store, your awareness intensifies. You notice the gleam of the lights off the polished floor. You smell some bread baking in the bakery to your right. You go to where you think the produce should be, and you realize that's where the prepared foods are, and then you get curious. Okay, where's the produce, and why isn't every grocery store set up the same? And then you walk over to the chip aisle, and you can't find your favorite can of Pringles, but you do see a bag of crisps that you've never tried before, and you wonder how those taste, so you grab that, you put that in your cart, and as you're walking towards the checkout down the wine aisle, you see a few familiar labels, and then you hear the squeak, 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 squeak of a cart in the next aisle over. You wouldn't recognize that stuff at home. Your senses are tuned in because you are in an unfamiliar place, or as I like to call it, you're dancing in the discomfort zone. And so your brain is tuned in to a lot more details than it usually notices. Like, have you, ever been, <laughs> have you ever been driving, and then you realize you don't know where you are, so you reach down and you turn down the radio? Have you done that, right? <laughs> what is that? Well, what that is, is it's your brain going, hey, yo, we need a little more power up here. Because <laughs> when we're in an unfamiliar place, we have to focus. And, we, and so by removing that auditory input, we now have more capacity for observation. And so what this was what cha happens with change. When we're embracing change, we need to focus in on the unfamiliar. But here's the problem. We don't like unfamiliar. We don't like uncertainty. We don't like unknowns. They are scary. We don't know what to do. We don't know if we're going to screw it up. We don't know if we're going to let people down, if we're going to fail, if we're going to get judged. All of this is bad. And our brains, biologically, do not like discomfort either. They don't like um, uncertainty either. Because to your brain, whose sole purpose is to keep this whole thing alive, unfamiliar is dangerous. And so your brain is going to try to get you back to safety as quickly as possible, back to what's familiar. And this plays out in a lot of different ways. One of them's kind of scary. So question for you. If you were to go to the hospital, say with chest pain, you would want your doctor to be experienced, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I want him to have seen it all, done it all, so he can fix me it with the confidence that can only be brought on by years of experience. Apparently not. <laughs> Dr. Carol Ann Moulton, a researcher up in Toronto, did some research and found that patients of doctors with lots of experience have a higher death rate when they are hospitalized for heart attack. Right? They found that in the financial area, too. Senior auditors were tended to be worse than undergraduate accounting students at spotting unusual challenges, different problems in a spreadsheet, like um, embezzlement. <laughs> From chess to sports to medicine to finance, years of experience is often negatively correlated with accuracy. And this isn't because experience isn't important. Experience is really important. The problem lies in people's desire to rush to a solution, and they're making conclusions too fast. And the solution to this is curiosity. We need to be willing to question our conclusions, willing to live in that discomfort just a little longer to consider more than just the first idea that pops into our head. We need to cultivate curiosity constantly. Maggie Jackson wrote a really cool book called Uncertain. And in this book, she talks about superior experts. Okay, we're talking about people, high experience, high accuracy. Okay, she said, Superior experts are forever testing what they think they know to find a better solution. And this is what we need to do when we're embracing change, when we're dancing in the discomfort of all this. We need to know that our brain is going to want to rush to solution. And we need to resist that. Dance in the discomfort a little bit and come up with some other solutions. 
okay? It's kind of like what I would do if I ever was a mouse in a maze. I kind of have a feeling it's never going to happen, <laughs> but I'd be ready, right? So typically, when you put a cute little mouse down in a maze, he's going to run down the hall, hit the wall, and then turn the way he did yesterday. He'll run down that hall, hit the wall, turn the way he did yesterday, and on and on and on, because yesterday's turns got him to the mouse pellets, right? What I would do is if they plunked me in the maze, I'd run down the hall, I'd hit the wall, and I'd stop. And then I'd scamper up the wall and peek over and see what was at the end of each path. All right, I got mouse pellets over there. I was there yesterday. It kind of tastes like crap, but you can live on it. I got, is that Vegemite over there? I love Australians, but I'm not big on Vegemite. That's a nope. That looks like a snake, hard no for me. And oh, is that Wisconsin cheddar? I'm going that way, right? And that's what we need to do when we're embracing change, especially today when so many things are changing all at the same time. We need to be like that little power mouse. We need to be able to dance in that discomfort and think about cultivating that curiosity, coming up with a different solution than yesterday's, just to see if there's a better way. And the benefits of cultivating curiosity go way beyond just finding out, figuring out what to do about today's change. First of all, events are more pleasurable when you are curious, because when you're curious, you are present, and you savor the moment, like that grocery store walk we just did a couple minutes ago, or like a flight I recently took with a first-time flyer. Seeing that experience through those little eyes, those seven-year-old's eyes, it was so much more fun, it was so exciting. When you're curious, you're present, and the good stuff is even better. Purely from a health perspective, curiosity may make you live longer. There was a study I read that was done in 2006, 2,000 people ages 60 to 86, and the one factor that was positively correlated with the subjects being alive at the end of the study five years later was curiosity. It didn't matter if they smoked, if they had cardiovascular disease, how old they were at the beginning, or even if they had cancer. The factor that made a difference was curiosity. And there's a lot of promising research saying that curiosity may reduce the instances of Alzheimer's. If curiosity has that many health benefits that late in our lives, imagine what it can do if we use it all the time. Curiosity also helps your social relationships, and I'm a perfect example of this. In 2020, I saw a call for educational sessions for the Kiwanis Amplify program. And... Uh, I hear over here, woo-hoo. <laughs> That's the person who's, who started it. Um, I, I, and I'm, I don't normally do workshops recorded, but what I typically did, and this was in 2020, what I typically did for money was talk to a whole bunch of people in the same room, which, as you recall, we were not doing. And so I thought, what else could I do? Because that's the question I ask myself. I ask myself, instead of what should I do, I ask, what else? could I do? Like that little mouse in the maze. When we're solving these problems and looking for other solutions, like how am I now going to make a living if nobody's getting in the same room? How else can I solve this? And because I took part in the Amplify program, I got to know Lindsay, who's part of the reason I'm here on this stage today. I got to know Kathy Tutty, who introduced me. Who knows Kathy? Do y'all know Kathy? Right? I knew there would be some, woo! I mean, I spoke at her club. She's been an incredible supporter. And I also became friends with one of the Amplify instructors, Dr. Erica Mikulski. And she and I often get on Zoom and mastermind about our speaking business. Three incredibly influential connections because I was curious about this thing. And lastly, curiosity can improve your happiness. Gallup did a study, 130,000 people over 100 countries all over the world. And what they found, that there were two factors that consistently around the world impacted people's enjoyment of a particular day. One, I knew there was something, somebody I can count on for help. Okay, that's a good one. Number two, I learned something new. Curiosity 
creates learning experiences, and learning experiences create, enhance happiness. Change is hard. We don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's often not what we want. But the discomfort comes from those unknowns and that unfamiliarity, and that unfamiliarity is good for us. So embrace that. And you don't have to do it all at once. You can start small. Just order something different at dinner tonight, okay? Or take a different route home from work, or go to a different grocery store. But those little, low-stakes uncertainties are going to allow you to start injecting curiosity and building your resilience in unfamiliar situations. So when you're in the big change, when the big discomfort comes and big unknowns are there, you are ready to pause, dance in the discomfort of not knowing, and cultivate your curiosity. Thank you for everything you all do. Enjoy.